Okay, uh, hello everyone. I, I think we're expecting a few more folks to join us, but I, I want to get started uh, if that's okay with Keith, um, because we do have a number of you here. We're ready to go. Keith, are you ready on your end? Uh, uh, yeah, that would be fine. Great, great. Um, big thank you to Keith for hosting us uh, once again out of SUNY Purchase with Adobe. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm Beth Gordon Klingner from PACE. And um, we want to welcome you to our fall mug meeting. And it's nice that we're starting to get to know one another, although I think we have a couple of new people joining us. So a special welcome to you. And we have an, a, a good collaborative agenda that a few of us have contributed to, but we're really a very open group. So we encourage everyone to chime in and uh, feel free to suggest other topics as they strike you. And um, I guess with, with that, we'll get started. I think our, our first topic um, is an update about the SUNY ePortfolio Task Force. And Ellen, and I'm not sure if Ellen is with us, so I'll leave it up to you if you want to start with that or wait till she joins. Uh, yeah, I was hoping Ellen uh, would be uh, in by now, but uh, I can say a few things. So um, I'm going to stop sharing the agenda for a minute and bring up the task force charge. Um, SUNY has a um, system-wide group called the uh, Faculty access, no, Faculty Advisory Committee on Teaching and Technology. It used to be the Faculty Access to Computing Technology Group, but they've broadened that out to be more, um, more than just technology, more than just, um, you know, how to get computers to, to faculty. So uh, as part of this uh, FACT2 organization in SUNY, um, they've started doing um, annual or, or year-long task forces looking at um, specific issues of teaching and learning across uh, across the SUNY campuses. And so I see someone scrolling through the, the document here. Uh, this year, um, uh, FACT2 group is going to be, uh, has constituted a task force on ePortfolios to look at um, what's being done with ePortfolios across the SUNY campuses um, and to make recommendations about how to promote uh, promote ePortfolios, what kind of processes we should have in place, how to um, how to coordinate ePortfolio efforts across the 60 plus uh, SUNY campuses. So uh, the task force is just getting underway. We're going to be doing uh, a variety of, of fact-finding um, activities this fall. We'll, uh, we'll have an interim meeting in January and then we'll be doing a more formal presentation to the SUNY Conference on Instruction and, in, and Technology in May and make some, some formal recommendations. The um, approach we're taking is sort of a life cycle uh, approach. Um, I mean, ideally, in New York State, we could probably we could perhaps coordinate a sort of a K through 20 or K through 20 plus approach to e-portfolios. You know, and you're really promoting the use of e-portfolios throughout the um, K through 12 space and have those feed into the kinds of e-portfolios we want to develop for teaching and learning. At the at the campuses and then ongoing professional development. So we've got four subgroups. Yeah, we are specifically uh, charged not to recommend a specific platform, which is a little disappointing on my end. But um, anyway, uh, we're we're breaking up into four groups to look at different aspects of. Uh, of this continuum. Uh, so one group is, is really looking at 
how K through 12 will be using ePortfolios um, and uh, the kinds of teacher training programs. Well, I mean, I, you can kind of read along on the charge here. But essentially, uh, how to promote the use of ePortfolios in the lower grades. Uh, then there's going to be a, a set of us that are looking at um, that transition between K through 12 and SUNY. Um, uh, there's uh, there are a number of members on the group from Empire State, and of course Empire State has a big focus on prior learning assessment, and we want to have easy transition from K through 12 as well into SUNY. So that's what that group will be looking at. I'm heading up the at SUNY uh, subgroup, which is really going to be looking at how ePortfolios are used and can be used on SUNY campuses. My focus, of course, is primarily on the teaching and learning aspects, how to, um, how to promote reflective learning on the part of students. But we'll also be looking at assessment and career development issues, and then there you know, is the post SUNY component of this life cycle, um, how to promote ongoing use of the ePortfolios for professional development and so forth. So that's, uh, that's in a nutshell what the task force has been charged with doing and um, the way we're going about doing it. Um, but again, we are really just started in the process. We've had we've had an organize, organizing meeting, and then we had a very nice Adobe Connect session just recently with um, someone who was involved in getting the Cal State um, ePortfolio project up and running. So that was very um, informative in you know thinking real big picture. You know, if we could get some of these statewide ePortfolio initiatives going and um, sustainable and productive, then you know, really thinking about how to coordinate efforts across states would be you know the next logical step down the road. But that's that's a real big picture. So that's a little quick thumbnail as to what's uh, what's going on with the task force. I don't know if there are any questions. I mean, we are trying. We are um, working on getting a, a number of non-SUNY folks involved. Uh, obviously, um, we want to get business uh, representation on the task force. Education, you know. Where is workplace in this? Um, I mean, workplace issues is, is one of the aspects we're, we're meant to look at. That's why we're trying to get um, you know business and other representatives on the task force. This is, um, you know, the fact is kind of uh, on the same status as CPD. So Center of Professional Development, uh, it also reports to the provost, as does the fact council, and um, a number of other SUNY bodies. So. So let's see. Hi, Alan. I see you just joined us. I uh, went through quickly um, a little bit about the charge. I don't know if you want to say some something, some additional things about um, goals, what we're hoping to do. Um, I don't know because I didn't hear what you <laughs> <laughs> what you said, but I see that um, there was a question about recommending a platform. Did you address? We, we can't recommend a platform. Yeah, I mentioned that. Yeah, so the goal is that we're going to issue enough information that an RFP 
will be um, issued from the FACT Council, and then um, and then they will begin looking for a platform. So so that's the uh, that's the intention. And yeah, it, uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty big uh, task that we are undertaking. So um, yeah, I, I've I've mentioned to Ellen I'm a little concerned about the the fact that this is going to result in an RFP coming out from the FACT Council because uh, you know I've got a real f um, concern that RF the RFP process, especially as it's done in SUNY really promotes commercial products and it's very difficult to get um, a fair evaluation of, of open source self-hosted kind of options for um, things that we'd be looking at in the RFP. Yeah, I, I mean I, I'm sure that is a concern and, and I don't know how much um, well, if we know it's being issued, whether or not we can put together a presentation to um, meet the RFP just from, you know, just from interested, yeah, from MUG or some interested Mahara users to, to write up a response to the RFP. I, mean, I think it's probably possible and unprecedented, which, which might be kind of cool. Um, yeah, pur Purchase could host Mahara for all the SUNY campuses. <laughs> well, um, you know, maybe we can talk um, SUNY systemness into recognizing the importance of open source for all of SUNY, but, you know, who knows. Yeah. I think it will probably fold into the open SUNY initiative, to tell you the truth, because um, the open SUNY initiative has to do with portability across, part of it has to do with portability across all the systems so that students can take courses at any of the 64 campuses and have those credits accepted at any of the 64 campuses, you know, that's part of the systemness um, and the direction that the chancellor wants to go, a kind of a unifying um, uh, system. And I think that this is stemming from the systemness and the Open SUNY initiatives as maybe one way of beginning that, uh, that endeavor. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, actually, Ellen, that issue about Open SUNY is probably something we should talk about because I was at a meeting on campus here. We were talking about registration and banner issues and so forth, and I brought up, well, you know, how will the the push for greater transferability of courses across uh, SUNY impact some of the things we were talking about, and and I got the fee feedback from on campus here that, oh, no, 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 the, uh, the website uh, is just um, to make it easier for uh, students to be able to see what would transfer, that there wouldn't necessarily be any push for, you know, Campus X's course in such and such uh, field to be necessarily accepted as that comparable course at another SUNY campus. So, you know, are you, how much do you think the Open SUNY initiative is really going to push students actually taking specific course credits rather than general course credits across. That maybe is too much yeah. SUNY uh, discussion, but. Yeah, and in the initial conversations there was a lot of pushback from faculty. So, you know, um, we'll have to see how it eventually all plays out, but part of our charge includes looking at pr assessment of prior learning, which is a huge thing, and currently I think Empire State is about the only college in the system that's doing that. So whether the credits will transfer over as a prior learning assessment, you know, recognition of prior learning, or what the provost is thinking about in those terms, he clearly stated that part of our charge 
and, and one major part of our charge is to look at prior learning assessment and bringing this into the whole ePortfolio initiative. Um, I think that there's a lot of schools in the SUNY system that are looking at badging and alternate forms of assessment and that this is also going to be part of this because, you know, we're just undertaking this in a year from now, a lot can change. So um, I, think, I think that this particular initiative has the potential to be different from any of the other ePortfolio initiatives, you know, done on a statewide basis previous to ours because the focus is so broad and because it rolls in prior learning assessment and workforce um, compatibility. Um, so I think that that's what will distinguish us from what has been done previously, which focused on, on um, internal assessment. Um, so ours is kind of adding a, a second layer to that. And Don, I don't know, I haven't heard anything about ePolio Pennsylvania. Um, we were in conversations with ePortfolio California. Um, John Idelson was our guest presenter at our last meeting. And um, he also mentioned the initiative in Minnesota. But um, Pennsylvania wasn't brought into the discussion, so I'm not even familiar with it. I do want to bring in uh, someone from Australia to talk about their workforce um, initiatives, their, their workforce e-portfolio initiatives, because um, I think that will get us in the right direction. Oh, it's driven by the Department of Labor. Hmm. Got any contact information over there, Don? <laughs> I was hoping to get somebody from the Department of Labor on our committee. Okay, good, thanks. Ethan Allen, I'm wondering because of our, our, the rest of our agenda, if we should perhaps yeah. respond to let people, you know, certainly we'd love to still have the questions about this topic keep coming through the chat, and perhaps Ethan Allen and others can keep responding if that's okay with everybody. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds good with good us. good to me. <laughs> okay, so, um, we'll turn it over to Garrett, um, who, who had the good memory uh, and kept good notes about some of the questions that came out of our, our last meeting in, at the ABLE conference. So if Garrett's connection is good, we'll turn it over to him. Yeah. How am I? Okay. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Garrett, and um, it's absolutely miserable in New Haven today. So, um, but I'm going to try to counteract that with a boosting of a little bit of my mood. Um, so, uh, a couple parts in my portion of the presentation today um, that I want to talk about are um, posting footage from our recorded sessions, uh, creating kind of like an archive for shared shared resources the possibility of creating some academic papers and looking at some other user groups. And, I, you know, I just have a couple thoughts about each portion and I was thinking maybe we could just have a discussion or just type up a little bit after each bullet point. So the first point um, that I wanted to talk about um, that we spoke about in uh, Boston, seems like so long ago, was about taking some of this recorded footage of meetings like this and perhaps some student showcases and um, kind of creating some reusable objects. And so I think we have so many goodies in here and so many good um, best practices that could be pulled out of our meetings, but it would just take some people, <laughs> some workers uh, to kind of look back and grab that material. And then that could be placed in an area where people can look back and kind of, um, you know, use for reference material. I think, you know, part of how I see MUG is kind of enhancing pedagogy. Um, it's, it, it's an environment that's inviting and informing. And, you know, we could kind of pull out short sections, short video sections that just say, you know, the Mahara user group discusses uh, integration with badges, or the Mahara user group discusses problems with XYZ, or commonly overlooked features, um, so forth. So I just wanted to get everybody's thoughts on that, maybe the feasibility of it, um, and then maybe in the next bullet point we could talk about um, actually how to share it out and where might be a, a good spot for this, but how do you all kind of interpret the um, feasibility of a project like this? Uh, 
So I, I, I added a notes field. Anyone can type if they want to, or you can type in the chat. Um, or everyone should have microphone um, capabilities as well if you want to do that. I think I'll use my voice if that's OK. But I was wondering about us contributing to a repository that might exist somewhere um, so that other people who aren't using Mahara um, might see the objects and, and think about Mahara. I wonder if that's a possibility. So Ellen, maybe a repository, some of the learning object repositories like like Merlot or something like that? Yeah, some of the learning object repositories. Or it was suggested to put it on Mahara.org. I, I don't know if they have. I know that they have a place where they post um, presentations. And I wonder if they could create a category for reusable learning objects. I don't know. It's just a thought that we might do something like that. I think that's a good idea. The way that I see it is just kind of like a, a page full of thumbnail videos that just with different topics. Um, maybe on maybe on the Mahara.org website would be good for this. I'm not sure of the venue, um, but you know we just need some some e-turns or or someone who could just kind of look through the material that we've already created, which you know pat on the back is some great stuff, and you know. Um, cut through it and do some video editing, which, you know, I could say it's just time, you know, time consuming, that's all. Yeah, that w the, um, that the bottleneck will be finding the material, cutting it out. I mean, once it's available, it, we should put it everywhere we can think to put it. I mean, it's not just what's the best place, but what are all the places. So, you know, Mahar.org is, is an obvious one, um, but you know, if we can get it onto some of these other repositories, or somebody mentioned, you know, a blog showcasing highlights, um, Facebook, our Facebook site. The uh, trouble with a blog is you know, we'd have to figure out how to drive the traffic to it. Um, but yeah, the once we've got the the objects, we ought to try to post them as many as many different places as we can. Yeah, I agree on that. And on Beth's point about um, deciding on the topics, I think that will help kind of give us some focus. You know, um, so creating the topics and then kind of going out and seeking uh, some content that we've already created, I think, would be good. Um, so maybe we in Facebook we can talk about some topics that we might think others would like to see, and then we can um, have some some folks go out and look for that material that we've created. And and I agree, uh, Keith, that putting it everywhere possible is good. Yeah. OK, um, so maybe for the sake of time, we should just move on to the next point, which is closely related to it. And you know, we have these shared resources that have been posted in our, our Facebook page so far. For example, one that sticks out to me is the um, assessment toolkit. Some folks are sharing great links, other Word documents. Um, and I just think it's it's excellent. I'm just wondering if there need to be other places um, or, or perhaps a central location where all these resources can be housed. Um, I'd hate to see things become so fragmented you know, and all over the place that there's not one good location to view all this. 
But I remember this kind of harkens back to our discussion about whether Facebook was a good place to, to have our discussions to begin with. And perhaps we're running into that problem now. If we're creating all of this good content, you know, what's a good way to deliver it and, and share with others? So um, I guess that's just more things to talk about. You know, as, as we create different types of material, where should it go? So any thoughts on that? Oh, right, the Mahara Wiki as opposed to the Mahara Org site. Does, uh, does ABLE have a repository or set of res a page of resources or something like that? I think maybe the problem that we're having is a problem that every university is having or anybody who wants to put content on the web is having, you know, what's what's the best medium for the message, you know? Yeah, I'm going to jump in with the mic here, too. I, I think this is a challenge for us. I mean, we have a mug website at Pace, but it, it doesn't make sense to have this stored at any one school. and. Um, you know, I guess my vote would be to kind of continue along the path that we're, we've been heading using a combo of Facebook and Mahara.org slash Mahara Wiki um, because I think that's how we will continue to sort of bump into and attract other, other MUG members. I think if we start getting to too many other tools, we'll be spread thin and it will be hard to keep, it will be hard to keep things updated. But if we can use Facebook for what Facebook is best at, getting the communications out, doing some of the brainstorming, for example, um, with Garrett's suggestion for the categories, but then actually archive them, the content, the reusable objects uh, in Mahara, you know, the Mahara site someplace, then maybe, maybe that makes the most sense. I think you're right, yeah. Any other, anybody else have uh, other thoughts on this before we move to the next point? Yeah, it definitely is. Like, yeah, and like, like uh, Beth said, you know, let's use it for what it's what it's good at. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we've had this conversation. It bothers a bunch of us, uh, but it's been useful. So it's uh, kind of a trade-off there. We're not sure. Um, yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, so I'm I'm wondering how broad you want this to reach. Um, how, how, when you're talking about putting this information out there, is it something you want to be very public? Or is it something closed that you then want to expose publicly? Yeah, I think that's a good point, especially when it comes to audience and protections of rights and so forth. Um, my original thought is, you know, if we're going to enhance pedagogy, let's make it as open and available as possible. So definitely not closed off. Um, and privy to a, to a few. That that was my thought on this, but it's a good question because it's now giving me some vo uh, focus about it too. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's a good question, Beth. Um, how would new new folks like to find Mahara info? I mean, I, I think it would be great if someone just did a, a search, you know, a Google search, let's say, um, people who use Mahara thoughts on this or something like that. And just kind of, I, I know that's probably on the wish list, but, um, you know, and just this page comes up where uh, it has best strategies and testimonials and things like that. And sometimes it's just difficult to find that. Um, and the last point that I'll talk about in a few minutes, it's about, you know, user groups seeking out other user groups, but I found that hard to find. You know, so how easy is our information to find as well? Um, the availability and accessibility of it, I guess, is what I'm concerned about. Um, so definitely gives us something to think about, yeah. Okay, maybe we'll take one more uh, idea in the text in the chat area, and then we'll move on to the next point for the sake of time. So I see Christian is writing something here. Okay, well maybe I'll move on to the point and we can just look over to the uh, chat box and keep everything in mind there. Okay, vote for Facebook. Great. Okay, um, so the, the next point that I wanted to talk about, in case anyone else is interested, I certainly am, but maybe we could just get a network um, among, uh, uh, among some of us who are interested. Um, to produce some academic papers based on what we're doing. What I like is that um, about MUG is that we're kind of seizing control of the technology. <laughs> we, we, like Beth has said, we're kind of, we're able to direct it with what we're doing right now with our requests and by our, our conversations and by our meetings. So that's what I like about that. But how can we now take uh, the control that we have of this tool or, you know, um, a degree of control and um, produce some good out of it? So, so I'm interested personally in the development of ePortfolio at institutions. I know that's really broad, but um, kind of like uh, user group collaboration and how it affects a wide range of academic institutions and the leveling effect uh, that a user group may have on um, education globally. So I mean, these are kind of personal topics that I'm interested in, but perhaps we could just get some information on a page somewhere that says this person from the Mahara user group is interested in writing a paper about this topic that has to do with what we're doing. Um, you know, some some it, uh, topics of interest that people might be, um, people may want to share so that we can get something together. And again, I know this is kind of um, a personal thing because I like to write, but um, it's something that we may consider, you know, for next year's ABLE meeting or whatever. Um, getting something published. I think we're doing something really grassroots and interesting, um, and uh, we should do something with it. I think, but that's just my thought. What are uh, what are your thoughts on it? So a lot of folks are already doing writing. That's good. Okay, I would like to talk. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Um, so I I'm just beginning with Mahara over at Pratt. Uh, they've had Mahara here for a little while, but it's in a in a sorry state, and we're um, we're going to be upgrading so that we're in the uh, 1.5. And um, I'd like to assess the changes that start happening here and then after a year be able to um, write a paper on what's happened. We're also going to connect it with our Moodle and create Mahoodle here starting the semester. So if you have ideas about um, questions for my assessment or topics, that would be really helpful and then I could share those with you. Yeah, I think that would be great. I mean, we could just 
type out or maybe we can share in some, some area, maybe Facebook, um, just topics that we're interested in, things that we're doing um, so that others can, can network a little better, like you said. Well, that would be great for me. Yeah. And also, you know, I think the two go hand in hand, but what's going on at your college or university and how MUG has helped with it. And so, you know, we tie in what we're doing on a larger scale um, with what we're doing here. Great. Yeah, it's exciting. So, so Gail, we have... We've got Moodle 2.2 in Mahara 1.5 integrated into Mahoodle. So if you, um, you need some feedback on, on your setup or things like that, you know, just let us know. Oh, that would be fantastic to, to see what you're doing. Um, I'd love to hear about that. We're just, we've, we've just upgraded to uh, Moodle 2.3 and the Mahara upgrade is coming in the next few weeks. So if we could share, that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah you could either, we could either arrange a visit or we could probably do a screen share kind of session between the campuses. Oh, that'd be great. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is definitely a conversation that uh, could be ongoing, but perhaps m maybe if anyone's interested, we could just put that information on our Facebook, you know, maybe what we're doing at our colleges and um, maybe topics of interest um, for the sake of writing or publishing something. And I think maybe Facebook would be a good spot for that. Um, the uh, last topic here is just, um, I think this came up in Boston as well. Um, maybe we have uh, some nearsightedness with what we're doing as far as Mahara users. I know others have said, yay, I feel like a cheerleader for Mahara, and it's true, and it's so easy to get stuck in that. Um, but I have, personally, I have no exposure to other ePortfolio tools, and, you know, it would be good to know what we're missing out on. So how do we search our counterparts in other ePortfolio groups? Um, and perhaps invite them in for some discussions for the sake of, you know, um, knowing what's going on in the larger ePortfolio community with other tools and other user groups. So any thoughts on that? Well, maybe the connection with um, LaGuardia's um, ePortfolio learning community, um, connect to learn would be a good place to start. I can talk to Brett Einan about it if you're interested. Yeah, Able Podcast, that's a great suggestion too, Don. Thanks. Well, maybe, um, maybe we can ask around a little bit, too, and, and just see if anyone from uh, other user groups may want to join us next time or anyone else you know who may work with another tool. I'll certainly do that, too. Um, I think it's uh, I think it would be beneficial for us all, I know for me, just to hear what other groups are doing, what are some... Um, uh, What's you know good good codes or good um, objects that are going on in other pages and so forth? And I know that's research I could do on my own as well, but um, maybe some people could share that with the larger community. So something to think about. Okay, maybe we should move on to the next section here, which is uh, reports and assessment. Thanks, thanks, Garrett. And it, it sounds like we're already starting to talk about some of these topics. Um, they, they do all go together. And um, this has been something we've been grappling with for a while, and I'm sure you are you are too. Um, we we just upgraded to version 1.5 uh, in August, and are pleased that to see that there are now some site statistics um, available in Mahara. 
and I don't know from the group that we have here kind of what version everybody's on and I'd be curious to hear maybe through the chat or through the mic too um, to hear from other folks how they are handling I mean there's two pieces here but just to start with the reporting how they are handling reporting um, in terms of um, usage and if anyone's trying to do any connection between usage and uh, student success and satisfaction and retention, we're trying to build some sort of model, you know, in, uh, internally here at PACE, uh, but this is going to take a lot of programmer commitment and, again, this is another perfect case of a mug topic where if we can combine resources or just ideas of any kind, if anyone has such a model already in place, We'd love to learn about it. Um, to help guide this conversation, I, I mean, I could show, through a screen share, I could show the site statistics area that we now have access to, if that would be helpful. I guess I'm just not sure where everybody is in terms of that work at their own institutions. Uh, if people have been able to gather the kind of reporting that they need from Mahara and or, and or are building structures to do that or doing it manually. I'd just be interested to hear from the group. Yeah, I would be, I would be interested, Beth, to see what you're doing. Um, okay, well, I can show you, I guess, not so much what, well, let me, if I share, can share my screen now, is that okay, Keith? That's fine. And do you all see um, a site statistics area? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, so this is you know this is new to us <laughs> since you know just as as of the end of August. So we're just really um, trying to better understand what's available here. Um, it you know it gives us some numbers um, that look interesting and impressive based on usage in just a few weeks, um, organized by users groups and pages, um, but really when we drill down, you know, uh, this user's number looks very high, but of course this is, this is representing people who have accounts, which is a, an inflated number compared to people that are actually using ePortfolios, so we really need to look at these numbers more, active users um, and active groups and pages. Um, but this really, while this is great that it's here, it, it's really got to be part of a larger, larger project, as I mentioned, to kind of be able to put this together. And maybe this is what, what um, Gail was referring to, that after, you know, maybe after working on ePortfolios at Pratt for this coming year, to be able to document kind of the impact that it's had. And so, although this gives me a starting point, I'm pleased that it's here, which is better than what we had at 1.2, which was nothing, I still feel like we, we need we need a ways to go here to be able to show that this is uh, having a positive impact on student learning, retention, motivation, a whole slew of things. But I can just click around here so you can, those of you that don't have access to this can kind of see the, um, the information that is included in the 1.5 version to be able to look at the number of groups, the types of groups, and then to be able to drill down and look at uh, pages. Has anyone worked with this information yet at your institution, either as is or as part of a larger um, assessment, reporting assessment project? Um, I'm looking at it just right now, Beth, actually, uh, having not really looked at it in much detail um, yet. Uh, since we're hosting uh, some portfolio projects for Empire State, we're actually seeing some interesting growth in pages and users over the last uh, couple of months. So um, something we'll be taking a look at. Mm -hmm. Comments from anyone else? I'm sorry, I, because this is taking over my screen, I'm not really seeing if anyone's putting anything in the chat box. I'm afraid to close this up because I don't know if anyone else has. Well, I would I would love to um, see how we can get to those kind of analytics um, right from the beginning here at Pratt. Yeah, if yeah, you're if at, you're at 
if, if you have uh, uh, administrative Africa, Africa, then when you log in to Mahara, Mahara, I can kind of take you back to the beginning. Well, we're not there yet because we oh, haven't yeah, upgraded yeah, our okay. Mahara. It's coming in the next few weeks, so I'm probably going to email you. And, okay, and, okay. And ask you when when we get it together, because um, I'd like to start with this. This looks like if I if I begin with the analytics and and start tracking what's going on, I think we'll really have a, a good basis to write something up in a year. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, definitely. it's certainly I mean, the first the question that, that, that we always get. Yeah. Well, how many people well, how many are using it and to what degree are they using it? Using it. But very quickly but after that, that, the deeper questions come. come. So, so what difference is it having? having? And so that's, and so the, that's part that, the part that, you know, you know we're still we trying to grapple with, with how we can show that there is a difference. Yeah, and, and some of that's got to be anecdotal on the part of the students and the faculty, but but you could probably track, um, you know, trends, like we tried doing X, Y, and Z, and then this changed some of our response, our numbers. Yeah, you know, you know, we, we, with, with Moodle, we've, we've got, got the built-in the built reports, reports from Moodle, from Moodle. but also have oh, Google, Google Analytics. Analytics. Uh, and, and the new, the new versions of Moodle make it very easy to add yeah, Google yeah. Analytics. I wonder if Mahara, Mahara is, is thinking about thinking also about making it easy to tie in Google tie Analytics. Analytics. Yeah, we. I did some work with Google Analytics with Mahara last year, but I found it somewhat limiting because I I wasn't able to drill down to the individual student e-portfolio hmm. page. Okay. It was. It gave me a snapshot of overall e-portfolio use peak, you know, you know, trend as a as a whole. But I wasn't able to get a sense of individual e-portfolios when they were being when they were trending or popular, that sort of thing. But it's something else that we can continue to explore. I know we're. I know we're getting a little short on time. So maybe again, this could be another topic that we can continue to discuss uh, through Facebook and Mahara and work on a small group if there's an interest. Well, I'd be interested in working on it in a group. Okay, that um, that would be great. Maybe um, maybe I'll reach out through Facebook and see if we have others, even not attending today, that would like to uh, coordinate online through email or perhaps another online meeting to get some ideas going. Is there a place on this um, Adobe Connect to put our emails so people can reach us? You can just type it into the chat, into Gail, the chat, and, Gail um, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll share the chat. Share the chat. Okay, um, okay. Keeping, um, keeping, keeping in mind our time, maybe we should move on to the next topic with Linda. Did we lose you? Lose you? Okay, maybe maybe Linda stepped away for a minute. If she did, maybe we should jump over to Ellen. Ellen, plug in ideas. Um, actually, I was. I'm glad to see that Don is here because maybe he can talk about some of the work that Gregor has been doing on the survey plugin. Can people hear me? Yes. yes. Ah, great. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, that's part of the reason I guess I piped in from Winnipeg here. I haven't done much in the last few weeks on this. 
but um, I have a sandbox Mahara set up with the survey plugin that Gregor has developed uh, as re uh, basically ready to play with. So um, possibly if you want to give me your emails, I can give you a login to the server. Probably I would give everybody admin access. Uh, uh, likely, uh, likely, I can't I give can't you give you admin, admin access to the server, server but hopefully but that shouldn't be necessary. necessary? So whoever's, so whoever's interested, interested in doing the survey module, module which, is which is essentially taking them, the, just for review, taking the, taking the my learning module, module, module that Gregor, Gregor developed, developed, where you where answer you questions answer and you uh, publish these graphical results. results. He's taken that and made it more generic, so you can put in your own questions and have some control over the, how those results are published or graphed. Um, I have a number of ways I'd love to use this, mostly for um, user self-assessment. Uh, but uh, if um, folks want to join in on this, it'd be welcome. As I say, I haven't really looked at it in detail for the last two or three weeks, so I'm uh, not as prepared as I would have wanted to be. But uh, it's something I very much want to be able to use in the, uh, to use in the next two or three months. I've got Ellen's, and uh, is that Christian? That's your asking for it. Okay. Um, and Martina, was that you also? Okay. Great. So I will open a place to paste this stuff. And now, essentially, just so you know, it's uh, pretty raw in terms of XML. You have to be able to parse XML. Uh, so it would be good to have somebody who knows that stuff. And the object here is to come up with a little manual for it. Here's how you take it. And here are some templates, and you can reconfigure them. This one looks like this, and you can just tweak it to make it look like what you want. OK, well, that's uh, basically it. I'll, I'll put mine in here, too. Um, actually, what, hap what keeps on happening to the the chat window. Um, I, oh, there it is. Um, I'll just put mine in here. And if I've missed anybody, uh, by all means, give me a call. Or sorry, give me an email. And I'll uh, include you as well. Don, I was wondering if you could take just a couple of minutes to talk more about how you do see using the survey for some of the learning um, assessments or self-assessments. Well. Um, couple of ways. Uh, our our um, portfolio is set up around what we call the essential skills, and those are nine skills that you can take from job to job in different kind of uh, capacities. And it's kind of based on literacy and numeracy, but moves on through things like communication skills and digital skills as well. Um, and what we do is we ask people to rate themselves. So if they were to rate themselves between one to five, uh, in those nine skills, you could see a bar graph or something coming out of that. So the person you would see uh, bars going out in, in whatever color, and, and uh, um, you could maybe get them to do that at the beginning and at the end, right. and then they could bring both both uh, artifacts out. So that's that's one. The other one actually is a little simpler, which would be just very simply um, doing something with radio buttons and just publishing that. And just having that, because right now there's no elegant way of doing that in Mahara. Uh, there may end up being with the Google Apps thing getting a little better integrated over the next version or two. But uh, just having something simple like that, where you you know, I'm one to ten, I feel I'm here. You know, uh, I agree this much, or or I feel I'm this much uh, uh, in a in a particular attribute. Right. So it's pretty simple stuff. Um, Gregor himself is also working on uh, what he's calling a, a wizard. Uh, Ellen Marie and I were, were, were talking about this a little bit in uh, Boston. He's apparently working on kind of like a multi-step thing where you um, ask a few questions and the, 
the information gets stored and then published in a on a particular page that's customized for you. That sounds pretty interesting too. This is a lot simpler. Good. Don, is the survey tool based off of the My Learning plugin? Is it is it going to work similar to that? That's my understanding. I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. He's taken some he's taken some questions I gave him around essential skills and tried to uh, plug them in. But I, as I say, I haven't. I I think I need I need help from somebody who knows XML a little more than I do to uh, just poke through it a bit. And there's a somebody who's doing some customization of Moodle for me right now that I'm hoping to sort of help help me. Um, through that, but that's my understanding. It's it's essentially you answer a question as you know. My learning one of them is uh, you answer pop up questions, and the other one is is just check boxes. And based on that, you generate these graphs. This I think would be similar. You're answering something specific, and based on that, based on the numbers generated by that, he's he's really focused on on generating graphs. And one of the things that held him back was uh, the library he was using for graphing it turned out not to be open source, but apparently that's been resolved. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Okay. Thanks so much, Don. Um, that was really interesting, and I'll definitely want to follow up with you too on that. I, I think we're yeah, no probably running out of time. So I just want to um, maybe try to wrap up a couple of our last items here. Um, I agree with Linda that let's let's focus on Mahar assignments next time. I think you know there's a group of people who I think are are you know including me who are interested in developing some um, pedagogical work through MUG, and so let's let's plan on having that for our next meeting. And I I just threw out. Um, the opportunity, if any, if you happen to be attending any of the fall conferences in the area, you know, we started out as a somewhat regional group, um, and now we're so glad to be part of an international group. But if any of you happen to be attending um, Sloan in uh, in Florida next week, or Educlaws in Denver in early November, I will be at both conferences, and I'd like to at all of these conferences, including Able, start um, creating some opportunities, perhaps the mug lunch table that we can, um, like we did in Boston, where we can get together, or colleagues from our institutions can get together, even if it's not exactly this group, so we can stay connected in person if the opportunity presents itself. So, um, oh great, Ellen will be there. So, um, if any of the rest of you will be, or people from your schools, uh, let me or Ellen know, and we'll try to create an opportunity, uh, a time and place where we can get together. And uh, keeping with our schedule that we had last year, I think we'll plan for our, our next meeting to be in January. And what we'd like is to have the uh, topics really come from the group. Um, so I guess we'll continue to use our two sources of the Mahar.org and Facebook to generate ideas similar to this. Um, we'd like to hear from some of our new, new people here as well. Um, if you want to stay in the chat and kind of add topics here or continue our discussions through those other venues. Um, we'd like to develop topics that are interesting to all. So I don't, does anyone have anything else to add before we wrap up? No, just thank you everyone for coming. Yeah, definitely thank you. Thanks for giving up your time. I know everyone is very busy. We're really glad to be working um, with all of you. and. Um, Hope everyone has a good rest of the week. We'll stay. We'll stay on for a few minutes here, just in case folks want to post any other questions. And keep that. You'll make the recording available. Yeah, I'll make the recording available. I I will stop it now. And.